In the last video, we created the sound effects for our player's attack ability. In this video, we'll design the enemy and create the logic for our enemy to move throughout the game. First, let's create the enemy. Right click in the hierarchy and select create empty. Name this game object enemy. Next, let's add a sprite to the game object by right clicking on our enemy game object, navigating to 2D and selecting sprite. Add the enemy image to the sprite and resize the sprite game object to fit nicely into the scene. Next, create the script for our enemy movement logic by right clicking in the project panel navigating to create and selecting c -sharp script. Create a public game object named target. This will be used to track the player's location in a private bool variable called target locked. This variable will be used to determine if the player is close enough to the enemy to follow and attempt to attack the player. Add an awake function to the enemy class and use the find function inherited from the game object class to locate the player game object in the scene. Create a private bool function called isTargetInRange that takes a float and a vector3 as parameters. This function will calculate the distance from the enemy to the player, returning true if the player is within the specified range, and false if the player is outside the specified range. Add a fixed update function to our class. This will be where we apply the movement logic to our enemy when our player is within range. Add an if statement that checks if the target is currently locked. Then let's call the isTargetInRange function in an if statement from the start function, locking the target if the player is within range. First, let's create a variable for our enemy's rotation speed and offset. Next, calculate the direction from the enemy to the player and normalize it. Normalizing this variable and using the ATAN2 function will allow us to calculate the angle we need to change in order to face the player's position. Now to normalize the angle based on the current rotation of the enemy, we can use the angle access from the Quantarian class. Apply this rotation to the transform using the slurp function from the Quantarian class. The slurp function will apply a smooth transition from the current rotation to the newly calculated rotation. Lastly, advance the enemy towards a player using the move towards function from the vector3 class. Now let's test our code and observe as our enemy pursues the player. In the next video, we'll be creating the logic for our enemy's attacking ability.